Hi guys, it's Jenny with Art for Good. So today we're talking about all things Dutch pours. What are they? Why are they so difficult? How can you master the Dutch pour? And overall, just how can you use this technique in your acrylic pouring? And it's my favorite effect. I love talking about it, I love doing it. So I'm gonna give you some of my tips while I play some of these previous Dutch pour videos that I've done for you. And the reason is you need to watch a lot of videos before you attempt the Dutch pour. So you want to pay attention to the consistency of the paint. How is it flowing on the canvas? How are they holding the hairdryer? What angle are they using? You know, keep watching a lot of videos from a lot of different artists and see the results that they're getting and really identify which techniques are, you know, going to be the desired effect that you like. So the first thing I will mention is consistency of the paint is so important. It needs to be thinner with a Dutch pour. So my typical paint, fluid paint recipe is about 40% paint, 40% Floetrol, and about 20% water. And then in Dutch pours, I use a higher ratio of water, just barely, I would say an additional 10%. So about 30% of your overall mixture is gonna be water. And you don't want it to be too thin because you know if it's the consistency of like water, then your shapes are not gonna hold up and your colors are gonna blend together and it won't hold up while it's drying. So I would say stick with about 30% water. It needs to, be the consistency of warm honey if you were to sort of compare it to another liquid out there. All the paint that you use in a Dutch pour is the same consistency, so it's all a little thinner. In some techniques, you're sort of using thicker paint or thinner paint in some colors, but in this case, all of it is the same consistency, so that makes it really easy to remember. And I sometimes will not use Floetrol in my base paint, and I will just use water and paint to thin it out to that same consistency. And the reason I do that is it helps me not get as many cells, right? Sometimes you'll see the base paint color popping through quite a bit on a Dutch pour, and that's likely because of the use of Floetrol or obviously a torch or other things will, will cause cells as well. But if you don't want cells, I would suggest just using water, in, especially in your base paint. And speaking of base paint, first you want to blow it out first with the hairdryer just to make sure it's even and level. Don't use your hand or a palette knife or a stick or something like that. I have seen people do this and then it can create mounds or streaks even in your base paint that you don't necessarily notice but will cause you heartache later on when it dries and it looks like there's streaks or bumps in your base paint. So the easiest way to avoid that is just to use your hair dryer and that will also tell you if you have the right consistency happening with your base paint because it should really easily flow across the canvas when you blow it with a hair dryer. And if you find it's too thick, it's better to find out when you're putting your base layer down than to find out when you've already wasted a bunch of paint on your painting. So about hair dryers, um, a lot of people have different preferences on hair dryers. I use a basic old hair dryer with a diffuser attachment. Nothing fancy. I use the hot setting. Some people have had concerns or I know other artists about using uh, heat on the paint, but I have found it helps the cells come out more because of the heat. And also um, you're not holding the hair dryer on the paint long enough to scorch it or torch it, at least in my case. So it has not been a concern for me in any way. And some people buy small travel hair dryers or miniature leaf blowers. I mean, you name it, there are a lot of options out there. And the reason they go for the smaller ones is that it's easier to control the flow of air because sometimes with a very powerful hair dryer, you'll not be able to control where your colors go or where you want your composition to be. So use the low setting, um, or if you're you know, you, going to use the high setting, which I honestly, I use the high setting quite a bit to get a kind of bolder movement in the paint. So I um, move it farther away from the canvas though. I hold the hair dryer up away from the canvas so that it's not completely, you know, 
changing what I'm intending to do. The other thing that's very important is the angle of your hair dryer. You do not want to put the, the airflow to go straight down onto your paint because that's gonna just push out in sort of all directions the color. So if you want it to have flow, you or you know movement in the painting you really want to hold it at an angle so about 45 degrees or even steeper works you're going to just angle it in the direction you want the paint to go and then you're going to alternate back and forth to create that movement some people have questions about why you would pour extra base color around like say you have a base color down you put your colors on top right and then in your dutch pour maybe in a puddle or in a line. And then you, some people put an extra kind of coat of base paint around that and blow the base color over the colors in before blowing out the entire painting. And why do they do that? And why shouldn't, shouldn't you do it or why should you? And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just a different effect. So people do blow the base color over the puddle, for example, because when you blow it out, it creates more of an abstract effect and there's a lot more cells that happen. So if that's what you're going for, try that technique. But if you don't do that, for example, say you're ma you want to make a flower that looks like flower petals and you want to be very precise about blowing out in say five different directions, then you wouldn't want to first blow your base color over those colors because it's going to make them less uh, solid in the lines. It's going to be not be as evident that it's a flower. After you do your blowout, some people use straws to just finish it off. It just gives it a different, again, this is personal preference. It gives the, it an embellishment finish. If you don't like a certain area or if, if some colors didn't show through like you like, you can use a straw and it's a little more controlled to give you those uh, effects. You can also use a toothpick um, or a, skewer, a wooden skewer of some kind or a popsicle stick to just make designs as well. Some people do that to make it a little more interesting. It's really up to you and that's part of the fun of this technique is there's so many different ways that you can do it. If you find you get a blob of color in your negative space and you're not sure how to remove it, there well, there are a couple ways. If you have a lot, you can always just scrape uh, with a palette knife the area off and then add more base color in and that should handle it. Um, or if you have a tiny bit, just uh, really easy is just dab, your, dab it with your finger and then wipe it off with a paper towel and then keep dabbing until that color is gone. And... Once you've mastered the Dutch pour, you can try out all different kinds of techniques. You can make a twist, you can play with different compositions. Um, you can also do a Dutch pour where you paint the base layer down first and let that dry. And then there's a transparent recipe medium, which I have a video on, I'll put a link here, um, where you can actually, um, uh, you know, do a Dutch pour over a dry painting. So there's a lot of different effects that you can get that way. So that's very exciting. And so um, I'd love to know if you have any other Dutch pour questions or even what other technique you'd like me to discuss more next. So please put it in the comments or even share with me a picture of your favorite Dutch pour that you've done. I'd love to see it. And I'm going to be doing some more of these in-depth technique videos. So um, if you're interested, please subscribe and I'll see you all next time.